how good will UCLA football be in 2022? I had a friend of mine who is a Ohio State fan. He asked me, hey, JT, how do you feel about UCLA going into this season? And I said, hmm, really interesting because they're coming off their best season in 2021 with an 8-4 record. They went 6-3 and three in the conference. It has been the best year that Chip Kelly has had up to this point in his coaching career with the Bruins. And there were many people who were really skeptical about Chip Kelly going into last year. I was a big defender of Chip Kelly. I said that, listen, you're going to have to give him some time. A lot of college football stole what Chip Kelly had a lot of success with. Because when Chip Kelly first became the head coach at Oregon, the kind of offense that he ran was different from what the majority of college football was doing. A lot of college football was getting underneath center, smash mouth football, relying on great defense. Chip Kelly, however, went to the no huddle approach, spread offenses. He's not going to try to beat you up the trenches. He wanted to spread you out and then gas out your defense. But he ends up coming back to an era in college football where now everybody pretty much is running the same style of offense that he was running at Oregon. So I knew that there was going to be a process, but it did pay off. UCLA did end up giving him a extension that would keep him in UCLA through 2025. And going into this year, there are many people who believe that the Bruins are probably one of the biggest sleeper teams, if not the biggest sleeper team in the Pac-12. Now, I don't believe they're the biggest sleeper team in this conference. I'm going to save that answer for another segment. You guys are going to have to subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys want to know who I think may surprise many people in the Pac-12, it's a team that not too many people are thinking of. But UCLA, I really can't consider them a sleeper simply for the fact that they have the fourth best odds to win the Pac-12 behind USC, Utah, and Oregon. And not only that, but their over-under win total for this year is eight and a half. So I can't really consider you a sleeper team if your win total is projected to be eight wins or more. I probably would pick a team that has seven wins or less, but... You have a really easy out-of-conference schedule. You play Bowling Green, Alabama State, and South Alabama. Those should be pretty three easy games that UCLA should be able to win. They did lose a good amount of talent, not only to the NFL, but to the transfer portal as well. But they've been really active this offseason when it comes to taking advantage of the portal. They are ninth currently in transfer portal rankings. Their biggest offensive losses were wide receiver Kyle Phillips, tight end Greg Dulicic. You also had him who led the team in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. He made up the majority of the passing attack along with wide receiver Kyle Phillips. So you don't really know what you're getting out of the wide receiver position this year. You do bring in Jake Bobo, transferred from Duke. He had 74 receptions, 794 receiving yards, and a touchdown. We definitely can expect him to have a really fantastic season with UCLA because if you're putting up those kind of numbers at Duke, it's no reason why you shouldn't be able to improve on that going to a team that has a better coaching staff, a better quarterback situation. You have Dorian Thompson Robinson who returns. He had a really good year. I really feel that we saw DTR mature into a very solid quarterback. 2,409 passing yards, completed 62.2% of his passes. He had 21 touchdowns through the air to only six interceptions. He ran the ball 130 times for 609 rushing yards, 4.7 yards per carry, and 9 touchdowns. And I'm really excited to see what he does in 2022 this year because he took tremendous strides as a passer last year. And that's always been my biggest gripe on DTR. I understand he's a very great athlete. I know that he's really good when it comes to running with the football, but his passing has kind of been spotty at times but last year he definitely took a lot of great steps when it comes to improving how effective he is as a passer and if he continues that improvement this season I think he could end up being a dark horse Heisman contender and if he ends up being a dark horse Heisman contender there's no reason why you shouldn't expect UCLA to be able to compete with the Utahs and the USC's of the world you also bring back running back Zach Charbonnet 
who had 202 carries for 1,137 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns, while averaging 5.6 yards per carry. And he's probably going to end up having a bigger role this year with the departure of running back Britton Brown, who also left for the NFL draft. And when you go back to the wide receiver position, outside of Jake Bobo, who else do you have? You have Kazmir Allen, who pretty much has been a returner, but he also has had some pretty big flashy moments as well when he's came in as a wide receiver last year he had four touchdown grabs for 17 receptions and 255 receiving yards cam brown had two touchdown receptions 17 catches for 247 receiving yards also josiah norwood also is probably going to be in that mix to be one of your starting slot receivers this year your offensive line should be pretty good UCLA, when I was looking at their roster and their depth chart, they don't have too many underclassmen when it comes to their offensive line. And that's a good thing and a bad thing because at least for this year, you know that your offensive line is going to have tons of experience. I think the only person who is in the upperclassman who's going to be starting is at right tackle. I think he's a redshirt freshman. So the bad thing about that is that you're going to be losing a lot of pieces on that offensive line going into 2023, but we'll worry about that another time. If you're watching this video, you only care about what you're going to do this season. And the big thing for UCLA, and I think this is what's going to make or break UCLA in terms of if they're going to be able to compete with USC and Utah, is going to be their defense. And their defense is probably the biggest question mark because you bring in a new defensive coordinator and Bill McGovern, Fans finally had their wishes granted. The previous defensive coordinator, it seemed as if Chip Kelly didn't want to let him go. It, it seemed as if he was forced to let him go. I guess they had a really good friendship. He didn't want to fire him or anything like that. But UCLA finally pulled the plug and said, hey, Chip, you got to let him go. I know you love him, but please let him go. And I think he ended up just stepping down and resigning pretty much. So I'm excited to see what McGovern does with this defense because this was a defense last year that dramatically underperformed because I was going into last year thinking that UCLA was going to have one of the best defenses in all of college football. Not only just in all of college football, but I was thinking that they were going to have the best defense in the Pac-12 and that didn't happen. And not only that, but they had tons of talent on the defensive side of the football. And they lost a good amount of players to the league and also to the transfer portal. But a couple of key players on this side of the football that I am really excited to watch. You have linebacker Darius Musau. It's always fun trying to pronounce those Hawaiian names, isn't it? But you have him, he's a transfer from Hawaii, 65 tackles, 7 sacks, 5 forced fumbles, in their interception. This guy is a monster. He's all over the place. He reminds me a lot of Jehalani Tavai. And if you aren't a diehard Pac-12 fan or you don't follow Hawaii football that much, you probably don't remember who Jehalani Tavai was, but he was a monster when he was coming out of the draft out of Hawaii a couple of years ago. He got drafted by Detroit, but ever since then, he kind of has faded out in the NFL, but he reminds me a lot of him. You also have pass rushers that you got in a bundle deal. They're transfers from North Texas. Gabriel Murphy and Grayson Murphy. Murphy's, they combine for a monster sack total combined. Gabriel had seven and a half sacks last year. Grayson had eight and a half sacks. Also, you bring those two in on defense. Your pass rush to still be really good, if not better than what it was last year. Bo Calvert had 38 tackles, four sacks. You also have cornerback. Devin Kirkwood, who I'm really excited about. He was a four-star recruit coming out of the 2021 recruiting cycle. He's 6'3", 194 pounds. He has great length and phenomenal short area quickness. And you don't really see a cornerback that's this kind of lengthy who moves this well. Normally, when you see this kind of corner, you're assuming he's just a press man-to-man -man corner. And he doesn't really move all that well. Well, Devin Cook were Cook. Kirkwood is completely different as a matter of fact he also could play safety as well so you have a lot of versatility with him 
And the few games that he appeared in last season, he had 15 tackles. He recorded a forced fumble and had an interception as well. I think he could end up being a breakout player this year for the Bruins defense. So overall, when you look at UCLA, I mean, for Chip Kelly, I think that this is a big opportunity for him because I think that UCLA has a very good shot of being able to win the Pac-12 this year. Not only that, but if Chip Kelly can end up winning a game against either Utah or USC this year, that's going to be really big for him. And I understand that UCLA beat USC last year, but you got to understand all the hype that USC has this year of Lincoln Riley as the new head coach, everybody that they've gotten in the transfer portal, Mario Addison, you got Caleb Williams, USC is stacked. Everybody seems as if USC is going to end up making it into the college football playoff this year. So imagine if Chip Kelly could end up getting a win against Lincoln Riley. Imagine how much that would change the perception of Chip Kelly. Because believe it or not, I still think there are a lot of pundits out there against Chip Kelly that feel that last season was kind of a little bit of a fluke. However, if you can beat a USC or even Utah, I think that's going to change the perception about Chip Kelly a lot. So I think that this is a really big year for Chip Kelly to really come and cement himself. And hey, you know, USC, USC, yes, they've had all these acquisitions. They brought in Lincoln Riley and whatnot. Utah is also going to be there as well. But USC... As good as what they are, they still have to worry about UCLA football. And with UCLA football kind of looking as if it's on the rise, I think that this is a team that many people might be overlooking. And if you're somebody who likes to bet the over-under, you get what I'm saying? I try to leave that alone. I'm not really the legal gambling age anyway, but don't tell nobody. But I definitely feel that UCLA definitely probably would be a really solid bet. I definitely could see them winning over nine games this year. I don't think their schedule is too difficult. As I mentioned, their out-of-conference schedule isn't all that tough. And I definitely feel that they can end up pulling off an upset against either Utah or USC this year. So... You guys, let me know if you're watching this on YouTube how good you guys feel the UCLA Bruins football program is going to be in 2022. Because last year, after they defeated LSU, I came out and said that I feel UCLA was going to have a pretty solid year. I didn't say they were going to end up being the best team in college football or whatnot, but I was thinking that they probably could end up being around eight wins. Maybe they could push in the nine this year, I definitely feel it is a realistic expectation to see this team winning nine or heck, even 10 games because for USC, they have some problems that not too many people are bringing up. You know, we still have questions about how good the defense is going to be primarily when it comes to that front seven. USC still has to work on some things when it comes to their offensive line. You're looking at UCLA, they're a better team up front than USC. And when you look at the Pac-12 teams that have had the most problems in the past, that end up having these high expectations but end up not being able to deliver on them, they mainly stem for our, from getting beat up in the trenches. And for UCLA, Chip Kelly has kind of changed his offensive mentality in a sense because now it seems as if he puts a lot more emphasis on being able to physically dominate you up front. And when you look at some of the more successful Pac-12 teams in the past, such as Utah last year, one common characteristic is that they've always have been super dominant in the trenches. So if UCLA is really good up front this year, there's no reason why this team couldn't end up shocking many people and end up being able to win the Pac-12. Now, they're not my biggest sleeper team for this conference. I don't really consider them a sleeper team because, as I mentioned, eight and a half win total Many people think that they have a legitimate shot to win this conference this year. Can't really pick the master sleeper team, but I definitely have a team that will fit that role perfectly. But you guys got to subscribe to the channel if you guys want to find out who that is or check out the JT Sports Podcast that's available on every single podcasting platform, wherever you get your podcasts from. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. It's out everywhere. All you got to do is type in the JT Sports Podcast. Subscribe to the feed. Leave a five-star review. 
It's simple. If you guys want to figure out who my biggest sleeper team is in the Pac-12 this year.